we have an official pick in this game already tweeted out by our man Troy Torrance. Let's talk about 1 p.m. Eastern, Kansas City Chiefs 0-1. First road game of the year at the Jacksonville Jaguars 1-0. Their first game at Everbank Stadium in Jacksonville, Florida. 82 Fahrenheit. Now, it says showers, and you know when we're dealing with these things, you want to know much closer to game time. But the way the weather is right now, it will clear up during the game. So it might be raining a little bit at the start of the game, but it will clear up you know, pretty much right away now. You know, we'll have to get closer to game time to have a real sense of what the hell's going on there. But that's the way I see it at this point. Let's talk about the line history here. These Chiefs, they opened up at Pinnacle at minus 2.5 and minus 112 at 7.56 p.m. on Sunday evening. So this line comes out right before our live stream starts, our Sunday night live stream. All of these lines do. Uh, then there was nine cents of movement in the first 27 minutes. It moved to minus 121. A little bit of buyback, a little bit of buyback. Uh, so then it didn't move. It, it didn't start getting hammered this two and a half until yesterday morning, around 1130. And then it hit again at 5 p.m. And that's when it moved to three. So it moved to three. And that three started getting hit. So it's telling us that there will be a three and a half on its way. Everybody expecting the Chiefs bounce back here. Everybody. Okay. Uh, Spenny on Jags plus three in the money line. Saturated says, give me the Jags. Fat Cat Ninja says, Jags smell like cash. And Wine Time Sword says, Jags for him. Benjamin Mill says, dead nuts over. So when Danny Lopez and Londo also like in the over. Let's take a look at that total. Move over there to the total for this one. This is sitting at 51. It opened at 51. It got up to 52. And then it back dropped back to 51. Cash-wise for this one, we have... Oh, sorry, take me a second. Here we go. Uh, we have 81% of tickets and 93% of cash on the over. That's a lot of money on the over for the market not to be moving in that direction. Then you have 78% of tickets and 93% of cash on the Chiefs, expecting them to bounce back immediately. The Chiefs come in on extra rest after losing the Thursday night at 21-20 at home to the Lions. They closed as four-point favorites. Uh, it was a disappointing performance. That eight-game winning streak for the Chiefs in week one came to an end. We were all over the Lions, so it was great for us. Things will get easier this week. Chris Jones signed a new one-year contract, so he got a five mil. That's all he got. Well, I mean, I should say that's all he got, but five mil he got. And then he had to wait out the one game. So what's that? Take take down what? Uh, I don't know. So that will what work out to then, I guess, about four mil. Unless I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Uh, handle the missing the first game. So Mahomes was 21 to 39 for 226 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. It's the hopeful return of Travis Kelsey. You know, uh, I I don't I I can't we can't be certain that he's going to be in the lineup. Uh, Marvelous Mike says the KC going to blow the Jags out. Uh, Mahomes was plagued by receiver drops. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Uh, he also ran six times for 45 yards. Marquez Valdez, scanty MVS, led receivers with two catches for 48 yards. Watson had two for 45, and Kadarius Tony was uh, unbelievably bad, dropping uh, perfectly placed balls, dropped four passes, caught one for one yard. The rushing attack looked poor. Other than Mahomes, if you take Mahomes out of the equation, they rushed for 45 yards on 17 carries. They were unable to get enough pressure on Goff with Chris Jones out of the lineup. They finished with one sack and four quarterback hits. The Jaguars outscored the Colts 14-0 in the fourth quarter on their way to that 31-21 victory at Indianapolis. I wanted... You know, I wanted the Jags two months ago. Uh, then I moved to the Colts, and I thankfully stayed off of it. Although I was angry that I had stayed off of it, uh, you know, watching most of that game. They closed the Jags as three and a half point favorites. Uh, you know, Press Taylor, we got to see his first game in control. I'm sure it's Doug Peterson whispering in his ear, but Lawrence was 24 32 for 241 yards, two touchdowns, interception. He also ran seven times for 21 yards and instant chemistry with Calvin Ridley. Eight catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. Nice to see Calvin Ridley back on the field. He was suspended in 2022 for violating Lee's gambling policy. Zay Jones had five catches for 55 yards and a touchdown. Ingram, five catches for 49 yards. Travis Etienne, 18 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. Caught five for 27. 
Uh, they struggled on third down, three of 12, uh, but they were perfect in the red zone. And that's an important quality that Trevor Lawrence brings to the squad. And Josh Allen was an absolute monster defensively. Ten tackles, three sacks. Tyson Campbell had a pick. The Jaguars' defense strengthened at the most important times. Was that the Jaguars' defense strengthening or the Colts' offense weak? Uh, Colts' offense that's just completely unable to run. We'll talk about that in the next game. They held the Colts to one and th for three in the red zone. Anthony Richardson and the Colts, two and 12 on third down, one and five on fourth down. But Brandon Scherf uh, injured his right ankle, carted uh, to the sideline. He has an ankle sprain. They're really lucky. They're really fortunate. There's a lot of talk about how lucky they are. It's just an ankle sprain, but he may miss this week's game. Uh, they also lost their cornerback, Gregory Jr. He did not return after hurting his hamstring in the first quarter. And, Troy, you've already moved on this game. You've bet it. It's an official pick. Tell us about it. Take it away. Yeah, so I'll start with the Chiefs. Uh, you know, they struggled in week one. I think it's versus a good Lions team after what I've seen, and they arguably could have won that game. I think we got I, – I don't know if you agree with this, Jim. Do you feel like the Jags easily hands down won that game? Or you, I mean, did you – I thought they were not going to cover, maybe even lose the game outright. Did you think that they just handled business? Well, yeah. obviously they didn't just handle business, but it seems it's like you thought the Jags. It's not a complete football team. It's just simply not a complete football team. And, you know, they've got holes. Uh, I do not want them at all as a favorite. But when I have money on a game, I want Trevor Lawrence in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And so I, it was, you know, that the, the defensive score for the Colts kind of skewed the way that game was looking a bit. But no, mm -hmm. this is, you know, I, I didn't, I felt very comfortable being off of the game. I felt very comfortable not having Jaguars futures. I feel very comfortable with the whole thing. And I'm not sure exactly how to make money off of them here. But I, I want to hear your backing. I want to hear how how what moved you into this bet that you're on. So I'm yeah. all ears. Yeah. All right. These Chiefs, I mean, they struggled, obviously lost, could have arguably won that game. Last week I was on the show talking about how, you know, Chiefs are due for a bear market. They've been so good for so long, it's hard to stay that consistent. Their roster seems to be, you know, stagnant to some to some degree. And last week they had all those injuries, which luckily I was able to beat the line move after doing so, a little bit of research into that. Uh, this way, this week, I think it's the exact opposite. I think this line's sitting at three right now. I think Kelsey's playing. I think when he's announced in, this line's going to go up to three and a half, four. I think it gets up to four pretty quickly, to be honest. Uh, this offense for the Chiefs, I mean, they had one of the worst statistical games they've had in years. Patrick Mahomes really struggled. The talent at receiver is sketchy at best. Um, and the defense, uh, you know, they're, they had the second worst defensive ranking against the run in the league in week one. But when do we see Pat Mahomes have his best games? I mean, it's when there's all this controversy and doubt circulating in the media. And I think we're seeing that again with Patrick Mahomes and this, this Chiefs team. And I think he's going to be able to respond. Um, and you look at the Jags and how they were able to uh, play week one. I think they were lucky to get away with a win and a cover with 14 points in the fourth quarter to save the day. I mean, they have playmakers all over the field. The addition to Calvin Ridley was huge. I mean, he's a he's a WR1. He's definitely that guy. Um, but the defensive ratings that the Colts put up, this, this surprised the shit out of me. The Colts defense is not projected to be any fucking good this year. But they put up great ratings, which makes me want to go back and rewatch this game. Why are they getting these great ratings that, they, that they're getting um, per PFF, of course? Uh, you know, the pass block for the Jags, which I was heavily concerned with, they ranked 19th in the league. And the run blocking was a league worse, 32nd in the league. The biggest issue with the Colts approach to week one was that they did not blitz Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Trevor Lawrence last year, I don't know if it dates back any farther than that struggled against the blitz and the Colts only blitzed them two times. Uh, you know, they fumbled three times and they only lost one. I think that's a little bit lucky, right? There's a little bit of luck rating built into that. And they were just over, over able to overcome the Colts with shared talent with, you know, Ridley, ETN, Lawrence, and a bunch of studs playmakers on defense. I, like I've said last week, and I'm kind of pounding my fist on this Jack spot too, is that I don't think the Jags are going to be able to compete consistently, especially versus the best talent in the NFL. 
if you put any team up against the Chiefs on a neutral field, the Chiefs are going to be favorites. They're still that team. Um, one game is not going to change me. I think it's given me a better number. It's given me a three instead of a three and a half or even higher. And I'm going to have to take advantage of this spot. I mean, I think we're going to beat the line. Like I said, I think this is going to close at four. And Patrick Mahomes, as a favorite of three or less, 19 and six in his career, including four and one over the last three years, winning by an average of 10 and a half points. Yeah, I mean, it all makes sense. Uh, the 93% of cash on the Chiefs, I think, is something that we're going to be dealing with in this. I think we're going to be dealing with, you know, everybody on them. I was surprised when we started talking about this game to hear all the love for the Jags. You Very know, I, I, see, I see a bunch of love for the Jags, too. That that Those numbers surprised me. It's your point earlier. Can we trust the splits we're getting on, on cash flow from wherever you're getting them from? It's It remains to be seen, but... At the very least, what I do is, you know, as I track all these, all this cash flow and line movement as it relates to the cash flow. And, um, you know, because you, at least you could see what happens when there's 90% on the spot and the line's not moving or what have you. This doesn't profile as a bad spot for the Chiefs at all. Hmm. Yeah. And Joe's saying all this money on the Chiefs, but no hook. You know, the important thing, though, and it's crucial, is it did open at two and a half. So that's that's a huge uh, part of the puzzle. I want the Chiefs so bad. I want the Chiefs so bad. I mean, for me, it just ticks all the boxes. You know, you have a team that looked bad early. You have the the rest advantage. I mean, I what what doesn't? I mean, honestly, even if Kelsey's not on the field, I wouldn't. The only thing was that I was sitting here thinking that the whole world's going to be on the Chiefs. I really did. So when I saw the 93%, I thought, well, that makes sense to me. I'm surprised that there's no juice at that 365 on the three. Uh, it really surprises me. But, you know, th this is just the, the taking advantage of the overreaction from week one. I, I think it's a must bet. I think it's a must bet. I really do. And, uh, I don't want to be on a spot with 93% of the cash if we trust these numbers or, or not. Um, you know, we, we trust, I trusted the number. I, I wouldn't say trust, but I, I believed enough in the numbers last year to utilize them and, and have a, you know, really, really strong season. 57.5% against the spread. So, I, I, you know, I don't see why it would change now. But I, there's, there's, there's not one thing I dislike about the Chiefs in this spot. Nothing. I like Chris Jones coming back. I like the fact that the Jags won by 11. I like the fact that the Chiefs lost. I like the fact that Andy Reid has extra few days. Like uh, Seriously, there's not one thing, not one thing that I don't like here. Uh, Brady says no way they can move this three and a half until Kelsey's sorted. Sharps would hammer that three and a half so fast it wouldn't last seconds. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is I have to bet the Chiefs. And I will. I'll bet them after the game today. Or after the show today, excuse me. Uh, yeah. So when uh, at Pinnacle, when night will, the cash flow doesn't really apply to Pinnacle, I wouldn't say, but 90% of money on the road team spread. Oh, I got one more filter on here. 90% of money or 80% plus of money on the road team spread. The road team is 11 and 6. ATS last season. Yeah. And in every single case, except for two, the line moved towards the road team. I just, I only want teams this week that struggled in week one. Uh, and I'm going to stick that. And that worked so it's well. Good logic. That really is. That works. In the it, long was, run. it was a huge, huge week too for me last year. Like, I'm, I, you know, I started out 33 and four last year against the spread and it was just the same tactics i've tried to do. That, that included the preseason but that's the same tactics that i that i plan on using this year so all right let's uh i'm gonna move on the chiefs minus three and uh i don't think that i need to uh double up here but i don't know why i wouldn't in all honesty uh 
I think the Chiefs come out strong immediately with a ton to prove. I think Mahomes goes to Kadarius Tony immediately. He's really good at doing that to the guys that's kind of hurt them last week. I'll move with you. I mean, I, I like this spot. I wanted to talk it out with you. I mean, I was going to put more than one unit on this spot personally. So I would love to get involved with the first half. Markel taking the alternate line chiefs minus seven. I like it. And, uh, and when we talk about moving on with more than you remember, just for our own record keeping purposes, it's all just one unit plays, but you know, we can obviously bet more on, on the spot that we like. All right. Uh, look, I, I I've, I've done enough. I've talked enough about the spot. Um, Al Cervix says chief struggled, Jimmy. They sure did. So they, 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 they I, I just look I seeing 93% tickets on them. It makes me uncomfortable. And that's the only reason why I'm not on them. That's it. That's the only reason. Uh, Terry Walker says over, under. Uh, I don't think the Chiefs are going to be a huge over team this year. And I think that there's a vividness bias here on the fact that everybody thinks this is going to be a really high scoring game. I think that the line is pretty sharp with where it is. And the fact that there's so much money on the over already and it's dropped a half point is telling to me. It's uh, This is not a spot that I would want the over i want the chiefs to have the ball for 37 minutes of this football game you know i want that so uh, but i'm not going to take the under i don't know how anybody in these jacksonville games can be on the under uh, because trevor lawrence can can get points fast and their defense is just not a defense to trust uh, the reason why there are going to be unders, though, is because he's not going to be protected. And then you already heard from Troy that they the the run blocking graded out 32nd. Uh, so Etienne's not going to be able to have this monster season because of it. All right. So I'm on the Chiefs, and I may double up on them. And uh, Spenny said, I don't think Tony's fully healthy. He didn't even play in any preseason yeah, yeah, but I think they got to go to him immediately get it, get him rolling. All right, let's roll on. 